Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Boss. And why did Eddie Brock and Venom transfer over to the MCU before Doctor Strange's multiverse spell in Spider-Man No Way Home? In a year 2024 filled with Madam Web, Kraven, and Venom 3, are we about to learn the secrets of the Marvel multiverse from Sony? Now that the multiverse is being depicted as a tree, imagery shared across Sony Animation, Marvel Live Action, and Marvel Animation, and maybe Sony Live Action, we have to discuss if there actually have been conversations across studios for how to logically link the sacred timeline and the web of life and destiny. In this video, I am going to explain what titles like Madam Web and Venom 3 are doing to fix Marvel's broken multiverse saga, whether it will help, and one little clue I think we all missed in Madam Web's title design, perhaps because we were too busy taking sips of ocean spray. Okay, it's easy to forget what happened the last time we were with Eddie Brock and Venom and Venom Let There Be Carnage in October 2021, because a lot has happened since then. Spider-Man No Way Home, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, Morbius, Quantumania, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, Loki Season 2. All these movies seem to kind of like reinvent the rules of how the multiverse work. But I think we need to go back to that Venom 2 post credit scene because as far as Sony is concerned, it seems like Sony still has some plan for how all these Spider-Man adjacent characters are going to be connected and how they're going to try to stem it all back to Tom Holland, Peter Parker, and the events of Spider-Man No Way Home. And I think we've actually been seeing that plan unfold in a specific way that is aligning with the MCU. But really the TLDR of this is, I think Sony and Marvel have both agreed to depict the multiverse as a vertically oriented tree. And they have agreed to represent the Spider-Verse as a separate organism living on that tree, like a spider web strung between the branches. And that the shared theme across both studios, both sides of the franchise, both the tree and the spider web on that tree is that all of these characters are controlled by destiny and they are strengthened by their capacity to break that destined fate. Okay, so let's return to the post credit scene of 2021's Venom Let There Be Carnage. You remember, Venom and Eddie are in that hotel room in Mexico, and Venom starts to tell Eddie this. We all have a past, Eddie. Are you, are you hiding stuff from me? 80 billion light years of hive knowledge across universes would explode your tiny little brain. Okay, then the room quakes and there is a golden light from the sky outside and the furniture warps into a much nicer hotel room. And on the other side of this transition, both Eddie and Venom are confused. What the hell is that? Oh, that's, uh, that, that's just a towel. What did you do? It wasn't me. Yes, I think we forget that, but Venom thought that that towel folded beside them to look like a swan was like a snaky symbiote trying to attack them. So Venom and Eddie are now in the MCU proper, what Kevin Feige would call Earth 616. And they see on the TV, J. Jonah Jameson's Daily Bugle broadcast about an unmasked Peter Parker, the cliffhanger at the end of Spider-Man Far From Home that was picked up in the first act of Spider-Man No Way Home. With everything that happened in No Way Home, like the various cameos, Doctor Strange's runes of cough call spell, opening a purple multiversal rift around the Statue of Liberty. We didn't really think too much about this Venom scene in the hotel room, especially since No Way Home's post credit scene showed a drunken Eddie in Mexico returning to his home universe and leaving a bit of Venom goo behind on the bar top. And the next moves of that goo and a potential Venom plot or a black suit of Peter Parker in Spider-Man 4 has really been the focus of all this since then. But we forget that something else must have happened to get Eddie into the MCU to begin with. Because if he was looking at Peter Parker on the news there, this would have been before Peter Parker went to go talk to Doctor Strange and open up that rift. And Venom mentioned 80 billion light years of hive knowledge across universes, referring to a shared knowledge of Venom symbiotes across a multiverse. And when they transferred to the MCU, Venom claims that it was not him who did this, something else brought them to the MCU. What was that? Well, in Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, Miguel O'Hara offered a new understanding of the connection between the Spider-Verse and the broader multiverse of reality. This is everything. This is all of us woven together in a beautiful web of life and destiny. The Spider-Verse. Spider-Verse? It's called the Arachno-Humanoid Polymultiverse. Now, you may remember in this film, Miguel O'Hara refers to the MCU as Earth-199999, but to me, the whole point of these nomenclature jokes, Spider-Verse versus Arachno-Humanoid Polymultiverse, is that characters from different universes just have different names for things, and that is okay. The important detail is that Miguel O'Hara displays everything as an all of reality, all of the normal multiverse, as a glowing blue branch. A visual that, back in summer 2023, we had previously associated with the sacred timeline that we saw in Loki, 
end of the Quantumania mid credit scene, but in this case, just reoriented 90 degrees to look like a tree. And then five months later, bam, the Loki season two finale pulls this exact pivot. Loki takes over the sacred timeline as the new God of stories and turns it from a horizontally oriented loom into a tree inspired by Idrisil. Marvel Animation doubled down on this visual by making it the final shot of What If season two, when the Watcher unveiled it to Captain Carter. According to What If director Brian Andrews in an interview with comicbook.com, their final shot of Idrisil actually came together when they were designing a wild Jack Kirby influenced depiction of the multiverse. But then Marvel Studios corporate called them and said, hey, you should actually depict a tree. And Andrews said that both teams of artists were working together on the final look of this tree on a shared deadline before the visual would have to go out to the vendors. January can be cold and dreary, which makes it a great time to crawl into a Bond Charge infrared sauna blanket. Bond Charge is a holistic wellness brand with a huge range of evidence-based products to optimize your life, whether you want to sleep better, have more energy, or just de-stress, which is where the infrared sauna blanket comes in. Bond Charge's sauna blanket raises your heart rate so that you can burn calories while you relax to help your body release endorphins and leave you feeling relaxed and euphoric. It's super easy to set up, heats quickly, and so now you can get the same relaxing benefits you would from a sauna while reading a book for 40 minutes on your couch. Get him, Darla. <laughs> Bond Charge's infrared sauna blanket has free shipping worldwide and a 30-day free trial for you to test it out risk-free. Go to bondcharge.com slash newrockstars and use the coupon code NR15 to save 15%. That's B-O-N-C-H-A-R-G-E dot com slash newrockstars and use coupon code NR15 to save 15%. Another important detail from Miguel O'Hara's explanation of canon events in Across the Spider-Verse is that he included venom infections within the arachno-humanoid polymultiverse, which I think was Sony's way of suggesting that symbiotes in the multiverse are part of that spider associated web of life and destiny that their hive mind is fueled by the same kind of arachno frequency that powers what is known as a spider sense that spider sense is a form of precognition and it is arguably the one truly magical and supernatural part of the power sets of all spider heroes it's also what they have in common with cassandra webb madam webb she is a clairvoyant and in the madam webb film she's going to use her ability to see the future to try to save these other three spider heroines, Julia Carpenter, Maddie Franklin, and Anya Corazon from Ezekiel Sims, who supposedly wants to kill them. It seems like the movie is going to give Cassie her powers from some lineage through her mother based on the exposition from the Madam Web trailer that Dakota Johnson just absolutely crushed. Ezekiel Sims. He was in the Amazon with my mom when she was researching spiders right before she died. Whatever quality this Madam Web movie ends up having, thematically, the idea of destiny is obviously important to the story. It is really a pretty similar conflict to the heart of Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse, a movie that I think we can all agree is probably gonna end up being a lot better than Madam Web ends up being. But think about it, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse is really the story of a dark, older Spider-Man who believes some younger, fun spider person or people are a threat to reality and need to be removed. And in the Madam Web trailer, we saw imagery of Cassie looking into the future through this spider webby animation. This is Cassie looking through the web of life and destiny from her point of view. She is looking through the webbing that is strung between the branches branches of the sacred timeline tree that God of Stories Loki is looking and listening through to keep tabs on his loved ones. Whereas Loki has been established as a caretaker of the multiverse in the MCU, I believe Madam Web is being established as a caretaker of the Spider-Verse that lives on the branches of the MCU. So Loki and Madam Web, parallel figures, both cursed with knowledge. So it was not Venom who brought himself and Eddie to the MCU just to leave a piece of himself behind. So who was it? I believe it was the web of life and destiny with Madam Web either either as a witness to that recruiting or a guide helping it in a transaction agreed upon by Loki. Venom and Eddie's brief visit to the MCU was designed to carry out a canon event or the violation to what should have been a sacred infection by a Venom symbiote native to that home reality. In this case, it's a symbiote from another universe who will be infecting the MCU Peter Parker. Why does it need to be from an alternate universe? Because part of Sony's narrative agenda, and I'm not saying Marvel Studios and Kevin Feige are totally on board with this, but I think Sony's gonna establish this for all the Marvel titles that they have a hand in, is what I'm going to refer to as the Miles Morales rule. Spider heroes are stronger when they break canon and when they become empowered by influences from other universes. So this is really a theme to just like share your resources to study abroad, right? Miles Morales is from Earth 1610 and was bitten by a spider from Earth 42. And that 
that, that is what makes him a mistake in the eyes of Miguel O'Hara. But I think Beyond the Spider-Verse is gonna prove that that mistake is actually the one thing that we all need to do. We need to share resources with other dimensions. We need to get scars and other realities. These kind of incursion handshakes are good things. They make the multiverse stronger. So that is why I believe the web of life and destiny brought Venom to the MCU to make Peter Parker stronger with a Venom from a different universe. And don't be surprised if Madam Web or Venom 3 revisit that purple rift around the Statue of Liberty from Spider-Man No Way Home to explain this. Because if you look at the Madam Web title logo, what is that there tucked in the M? Oh, only the set piece that the MCU, the Spider-Verse, and the Fox X-Men universe all have in common. And the symbol to travelers from other worlds seeking new homes. So if you take anything from this video, the connective tissue between Madam Web and Venom 3 and the animated Spider-Verse and the MCU are trees, webs, destiny, and the Statue of Liberty. Hey, speaking of X-Men, New Rockstars has begun our 2024 X-Men Stick Stick Rewatch, a weekly breakdown series from all 13 Fox X-Men films, and the first two are on the channel now. Give those a watch and subscribe to all three channels on the New Rockstars Network. Follow me at EA Voss. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.